Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Now building your own subwoofer enclosure is cool, but building one that has a custom beauty panel with a vinyl wrapped insert and plastic accent piece can totally make a subwoofer enclosure look awesome, better match our build and have a truly one of a kind look. In this video, I'm gonna be building this custom sealed subwoofer enclosure. I'm gonna show you the process step by step and I'm going to be introducing you guys to two new tool sets that are really useful if you want to make your own custom car audio builds. Let's jump on into this and get started. So let's go through the tools and materials that you're gonna need in order to build this subwoofer box. Now we'll start with the tools that you would need to build any subwoofer box and honestly these are tools that are just nice to have around the house anyway to work on different projects. You're gonna need a drill, a jigsaw. I'm also going to be using a table saw in order to make all my cuts, but keep in mind you could use a hand circular saw or if you really had to, a jigsaw. I'm gonna be using a brad nailer in order to secure the box together, but you could also just use a drill along with some screws. We're of course going to need wood to build the box out of, wood glue to secure everything together. And when we get to the upholstery process, we're going to need contact adhesive. Now I'm gonna be using a spray gun, but in some of my previous videos, I've shown how you can do so just using a brush and we're also going to use a knife in order to trim everything. Now as far as specialized tools go we're going to need a couple different things here. First of all this is the brand new Mobile Solutions carbon template. This thing has a lot of different advantages that I'll go through in this video and there's actually a special car audio fabrication fan only discount going on on this and on this. So you guys will definitely want to stay tuned for details on that. So we'll need the template. We're going to need the new eco tray. I'm really really excited about this because obviously we're going to be using a router. Now if you guys don't have a router yet you might not know this but routers have different collet sizes. There's a quarter inch collet and a half inch collet. Now the bigger powerful routers will of course have a half inch collet but for those of you that are more budget conscious if you have a budget router odds are it only uses quarter inch shank. So in this video I'm only going to be using these bits from this new eco tray and you'll notice that all of these bits have a quarter inch shank. That way we can use them with a cost effective router. I'm going to have links to all of this stuff down in the video description. Let's get started with the build. For this project, I'm gonna be using two of these Focal P25FS shallow mount 10 inch subwoofers. I of course look at the specifications from the manufacturer and take some different dimensions in order to actually design my subwoofer enclosure and to get started with some of the basic fabrication. I'm going to go through these first few steps really quickly because I want to focus a little bit more on the advanced fabrication. So, so far all I'm doing is cutting all the wood to size, I've cut the subwoofer holes out, I've added some threaded inserts in order to mount the subwoofers, and now I am completely assembling the box. If you're not familiar with these basic steps, I'll put a link to a video up in the corner of the screen that goes into them in more detail. So you will notice that I built this box in a way that sinks the subwoofer mounting face inside of the box, and that's because I'm going to be adding this beauty panel to the front of the enclosure. To come up with the design of this beauty panel, I'll start with grabbing some of the different templates and laying them out on the surface to get an idea how they're going to look. In order to start drawing what the beauty panel is going to look like, I start with measuring out a center line on the board. The carbon template has centerline markings so this allows me to line up the template and then I can start tracing each of the shapes. So I've made some markings here for the thicknesses of the different pieces. Let's walk through what each of the pieces will be. That way you guys have an understanding of how this thing is going to come together. So first of all, on the outside here, I'm gonna be making a piece that is three quarters inch thick and it's going to sit on top of this faceplate. So imagine this shape here, but three quarters inch thick. That is going to be permanently attached to the faceplate and it's going to serve as a way to nest the rest of my pieces. Inside of this, are going to be two different pieces. One piece is going to be half inch thick and its outside perimeter is going to be this line right here and then the inside perimeter is going to be this line right here. So that will be made out of half inch wood and maybe you're thinking hey if that's going to nest down inside of there and that's half inch and remember this outside piece is three quarters isn't that going to leave a quarter inch gap that it's going to sink down in? Well it's not because I'm actually going to cut a different piece that will sit underneath it that is a quarter inch thick and that piece, the inside perimeter will be this line right here, but the outside will be this line. So that's going to sit underneath the half inch piece for a total thickness of three quarters of an inch to match this outside piece. 
These two outer pieces will be made out of MDF and the inside piece will be made out of some sort of plastic. I'm not sure yet, it might be PVC, it might be acrylic, we'll see how it goes. Let's get started with cutting this first three quarter inch piece using this template. I've grabbed a new piece of three quarter inch thick wood and what I'm doing here is I'm tracing the outline of the outermost template to that piece. I'm doing this so that I can do a process called rough cutting and this is where I use a jigsaw and I'll rough cut the piece and I'm purposely not cutting on the line. I'm actually saving a little bit of extra material. I use a drill bit with a drill in order to drill a hole on the inside of the shape and that gives me a position to start the jigsaw on the inside. I've got my three quarter inch piece completely rough cut and just so you guys know from now on when I talk about rough cutting the piece, that process of using the jigsaw is what I'm referring to and obviously staying somewhat close to the line but leaving yourself a little bit of extra material because now we're going to take our template shape and we're going to use some of this stuff right here. This is template tape, it's a double sided tape. We're gonna stick it to the the back of our template and then we are going to stick it in place on our rough cut piece. In order to start matching the template shapes to our rough cut pieces of wood, we're gonna be using this bit here, the half inch flush trim. Now keep in mind, like I mentioned earlier, this is a quarter inch shank, so we can use the quarter inch collet, we load it into the router and we're gonna lower it down into the router table. Now you don't necessarily need this router lift, you can actually use a router and turn it into a router table. I did this in a recent video, you can check it out up in the corner of the screen. In the meantime, I turn on the router and you can see that the way this works is that that bearing actually rides against our template shape and it copies that exact profile to the piece of wood down below. This is really a satisfying part of the project. I always get a happy feeling inside going from that jagged rough cut piece to this perfectly flush trim cut piece. Here's a little bit closer look and it is looking good. I'm excited to get this together, but you know what? We're not done quite yet. I wanna add a little bit of an edge profile. In order to add a chamfered edge to the piece to give it a little bit more visual appeal, I'm going to be using a 45 degree chamfer bit. This bit works in a similar way to the flush trim bit. The bearing rides on the surface, but this is cutting an angled cut. So I've removed the template from our three quarter inch piece here and I've put it in place within its outline. And you can see that we now have this outside profile. Now, if you're wondering what happened here, I got a little carried away with the jigsaw when I was rough cutting it. So I just had to fill it with a little bit of body filler. No big deal, mistakes happen. But as you can see, we got the three quarter inch in place. Now I need to make that half inch piece that sits inside. To start making that half inch piece, I once again start with tracing out my shape. After rough cutting with the jigsaw, my piece looks like this and I can stick the templates in position using the template tape. Now I want this piece to have a bigger appearance, so I'm actually using two different templates, so I need to stick the two in place and I can carefully use the alignment lines that are on the carbon template in order to line everything up. Next, it's back over to the router with that flush trim bit where I once again flush trim and copy the two template shapes for that sweet, sweet, smooth looking action. So here's what the piece looks like, and yes, I'm going to be using that chamfering bit again, but before I do so, I do actually want to trace the shape of this onto a piece of PVC plastic. Now I could use acrylic or any other material, this is going to serve as my accent piece, and if you notice, I'm doing something interesting on the inside shape here, I'm using a bearing along with a marker to offset the line of that shape. I'm doing this because when I cut the PVC plastic, I want it to actually have a slightly smaller hole than the inside of our template shape. Now, because I want the PVC plastic to be slightly smaller, in this case, I'm going to use the half inch flush trim, but I'm also going to use an oversize bearing. This will all make sense in a second here. I'm going to start with attaching that half inch piece of MDF to the plastic using template tape. You'll also notice that I rough cut that piece of plastic using a jigsaw. Now over at the router for the outside of the shape, I'm doing what we've been doing already and flush trimming that outside profile. But for the inside, I'm actually going to remove the flush trim bit from the router. I'm going to remove that top bearing and I'm gonna use a different bearing from the eco tray. Because this new bearing is bigger, it actually spaces the cutting edge away from the edge of the template shape, which allows us to reduce that size of the hole perfectly and still have it match the shape. This gives us a really nice accent that will highlight the subwoofers and contrast with the different colors on the box. For now, I can remove the piece of PVC and set it aside, and then I'm going to take my assembly back over to the router table and use that chamfer bit to once again create a chamfered edge, this time on the inside of the shape, as you can see here. After I unattach the carbon template itself, I can start to put together my assembly, and you can see that things are really starting to come together for the front of this box. 
Now I do need to make a hole on the actual inside of that front of the box piece. So here I'm once again using the template and I'm just flush trimming and copying that inside shape. Now here's another cool use for a chamfer bit. As you can see here, if I put that white piece in place that will be over that front of the box, I can still see the inside of the front of the box. So if I use that chamfer bit and cut away that extra material, it makes it so that I can no longer see it behind the white plastic. Now I also want to give the front of the enclosure a nice rounded shape, so I'm using this bit here, the half inch roundover. With this bit, I make a cutting pass around the outside of what will be the front of the box. Now for some of the final cuts that I need to make with the router, I'm going to be using this rabbiting bit. Much like the flush trim bit, I can remove that top bearing and use several of these other different bearings depending on the cut that I'm going for. On the front piece of the box and the insert piece, I made this 3 16 inch cut into the material. These cuts will give me a gap for the vinyl and carpet, so keep them in mind and you'll see them later in the process. So let's do a quick rundown and see how everything is coming together so far. We have the box itself and then we have our front piece with the round over edges and on top of that sits the three quarter inch piece and then the inserts with our plastic and our final half inch insert piece. So here we have a view of everything going together. I'm really excited about it so far. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, if you can just take a quick second to hit that like button, it really means a lot to me and it helps out the videos. Let's move on to assembling everything together. First off, I'm going to glue the three quarter inch thick piece to the front piece of the board. On each side of the front board, I've added these pieces. And these pieces, once they go into the box, will allow me to use a fastener through the side to secure that front face of the enclosure. For my insert piece, it's going to pressure fit once I wrap it with the vinyl and the carpet, but I also want to have some fasteners that hold it from the back side just to make sure that the insert is really held in securely. Because the carbon template has those different holes around the outside of its shape, I can mark positions of all those holes, and then I can use the template to also mark those exact locations onto the piece of PVC. This allows me to drill clearance holes for where the fasteners will go through. I can now move on to wrapping the subwoofer enclosure and once again just for the sake of time I'm really going to breeze through this stuff but I have a video linked up in the corner of the screen where I go into much more detail. For wrapping the front of the enclosure I'm going to be using carpet for that outside large shape so I'm spraying my spray adhesive here to both the shape itself as well as the back side of the carpet and after I allow them to dry I can start to wrap everything together. I do this by carefully positioning the carpet with my hands and then I cut relief cuts on the inside of the shape and I'm using this pry tool in order to push the carpet down into the corner and once it's put down into the corner I will trim it using an Ulfa knife. By trimming it down in that corner, I can get a real nice clean cut and remove that excess material. Now on the back side of the panel for the outside of the edge, I'm going to be using that rabbited groove that I showed you guys that I created earlier, and this gives me another hard groove that I can push the carpet down into and then trim it. Now I've really boosted up the light levels on my camera so that you guys can really see the shape here on that dark black carpet. It's a lot more apparent in person, but here we go, we've got the front wrapped with the carpet. For wrapping the inside insert, I'm using this gray vinyl and the process is very similar. I'll first spray the piece itself, I then spray the vinyl, and then I'm going to carefully work the material around the back side and secure it into that rabbited groove that I created. Again, that rabbited groove really works well to guide the knife and cut the edge of the material. And as you can see, here is our finished insert piece. Next, I can take the white plastic insert piece and secure it to the front of the box using a few wood screws and those guide holes that I made earlier. And then I can add the vinyl piece, flip that assembly over and secure everything from the back side. Now I can take this assembly, add it to the front of the subwoofer box and boom, my friends check it out. I'm really happy with the way that this box turned out, but what I'm even more excited about is these new tools and how truly powerful they are for those of you that might be new to custom car audio. Now I know you guys want to see these subwoofers playing some bass, so we'll do that in a second here. But real quick, I want to talk about why I think these tools are great for those of you that are new. Now keep in mind there is a special car audio fabrication fan only discount going on on this new carbon template right now. I teamed up with my show sponsor Mobile Solutions and although we're different companies, they were cool enough to put my logo on there too, so I appreciate that. And if you guys want to check out this template, 
definitely check out the links down in the video description. Something else cool I wanted to show you guys is obviously it has all these holes, which came in handy for lining up those different screw holes for mounting everything. But what else they're nice for is if you wanted to precision align magnets and have everything snap together, they work really, really well for that. And for those of you that watch my videos often, you may recognize that the hole pattern is very similar to the SFS axis shape creator. So what's cool is if we grab one of the parts from that kit, I can use that SFS kit to attach that piece. Now you'll notice on the center of each of these pieces, there's three holes. And the reason for that is if we offset to one of the sides, now we have a perfect center line of this shape. So if we wanted to copy this shape, and let's say that we only wanted to use like half of it, let's say, for example, let's say that we're going into the side of a trunk and we wanted a subwoofer here and we wanted this trim around it, that would work perfect. You could also take this and move it to the center set of holes and then you would have two equal halves. You could also do something like this with adding the different arcs. Now you can see we've basically made a totally new shape that has three different areas that we could then flush trim and copy on the router. So to me, one of the coolest things about this kit is if you were just getting started, you could get this and have something that's totally functional that you could create this awesome subwoofer box. But if you did want to upgrade in the future and have more capabilities, you can get this additional kit and everything pairs up and works together. Also be sure to check out the eco tray. I'm super excited about this tray because I've worked with mobile solutions in order to determine exactly what bits and what bearings are in this tray. I feel that it will be really, really valuable for those of you that are do-it-yourselfers or for those of you that are just starting to get your shop into custom fabrication. Again, all of the bits are quarter inch shank, so you can use more of an entry level router. And even if you upgrade in the future to a better router, you can still use this kit. You would just use that smaller shank. This kit, especially with the different size bearings, really gives you a ton you can do for just this kit. So there you have it. Be sure to check out links down in the description. Let's take a quick look at pounding some bass. If you're new here, you can check out some of my other build videos here on screen. And a special thanks goes out to Orca Designs for providing the Focal subwoofers along with John, Brian, Ali, Nick, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping make these videos possible. If you want to learn about it, check it out down below. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.